so basically the studio let me go to the right place the studio is an area where you can um, design your workflows so um, very quickly um, orientate you you know to, to the different part of the screens so these are where all you design all your flows so if you have your flows it's, it's doing it shows up here the bot that you design is here. You can design, of course, multiple bot. So I'm just happened to be on this this particular demo bot that has, um, you know, I I help design. I'm work with uh, Ayehu engineers to design my workflow right here. So this is a workflow that uh, this is a conversational flow that basically help you password resets, and it's 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 a pretty simple flow. Um, you can do this, um, you know, in, 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 in no time. So it starts with, uh, of course, it identify this is this is a, a, a workflow that resets password. It asks you, you know, what system is it that you would like to reset? Um, and then here it would collect your um, what your it asks you and then it collects data from you. So here we basically build out a, a, a thing that has um, three flow uh, active directory SAP and VPN uh, followed by a particular node here that does uh, authentication requests to um, uh, to the Ayehu system in order for the two systems to interconnect and then uh, when it's successful then basically uh, authentication is done then um, then we do the password reset itself and then we complete so let me demonstrate to you how it works. So this symbol here is 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 the emulation that we're we're going to walk you through. So basically, when the bot starts, it basically have a greeting. So this greeting, you can set it up to anything you want. And if you are in the development mode, you can just point. You just have this little arrow here that points you back, and it tells you what which system is it, uh, or what flow is it that it's in. In, in the Rulai system, because it can, can handle multiple intent and multiple intent together, basically we build this as is a, a little convenience for the developer to know, you know, where because it, this list could be hundreds of line long because you have a lot of conversation that you go through. So here I would say, you know, the customer would typically say something like, "Oh, um, I can't log in," because it's typically you know, they they don't they, they they have some sort of problem in logging. In. So this is where the AI comes in, and it says, "Oh, I understand. If you say you can't log in, it has something to do with password reset. So therefore, it brings you to the right uh, work conversation, which is about password reset. So so basically, if I go down here, and and I just as a developer, I want to see which thing is this and it can point you to where it is which is the password reset and so it asks you you know what is it is it active directory is it sap is it vpn most users i would say you know some may recognize sap or things like that but these technical work they don't understand so the system has to go and figure it out you know a little smarter than that because you know somebody could say something like um i don't know i need you know, I would say, I don't know, right? Um, I need to access, let's say corporate email, right? The system has to be able to come outside. So basically here, yes, yeah, so you can see there's nothing, you know, there's nothing in here um, that coded this, but because the RULI system is a um, is a system that allows you to do multiple things during a conversational flow. Like here, it went outside and looked at knowledge and see, you know, what is it that the customer is talking about, so that um, you can guide the customer. So here is there's a whole knowledge section here. I just put in a little bit here for for this. But you can connect this, you can import the, the knowledge in, or you can basically uh, import um, a doc, um, an SOP PDF document 
it understands, it generates question and answer from, uh, from those documents, or you can connect it into a knowledge base, so you can do that. Because that will help both the system and the users to figure out how they deal with the context inside of the workflow. And as you look at the workflow here, there's nothing, this section doesn't exist. So, so we have a dialogue manager, which is another piece of AI that knows how to how to deal with those. So at this point, you know, I I uh, inform the customer, the the user that it's really Active Directory that you want. Hopefully, the user will click Active Directory, and then, of course, you know, here's the authentication comes in. So this is the authentication that is, is right now is orchestrated really on the back end, not by this bot. We can orchestrate it here, but this has happened to be orchestrated by Ayehu. So Ayehu, if, if Ayehu sends me a, a, a notification, so I just get a notification on my phone that said the, um, the code to authenticate is 6701. So I'll type 6701. And now the code, Ayehu is, you know, so now I'm, I'm getting the Ayehu uh, system to execute the password reset. So this, all of these come from the password reset from the backend Ayehu systems. It basically talk to Active Directory and, um, and, and give, me, give me the temporary password as well as logging in the ticket to ServiceNow and, and give me back the ticket that um, that it, it has done. So so that in that way it 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 it's now finished the first workflow that I show you, which is password reset on Active Directory. And I don't have to to go out and go back in and things like that. I could just basically now I can ask another question. I could say something like, by the way, uh, I submitted a ticket yesterday, right? Um, what is the status? Right? So, so here, actually, I'm, I'm uh, so see here, I'm, I'm poorly trained the system. So when it comes to this, this sort of thing, um, you know, you can, um, you, you have to, I'll show you how, how you want to train it. So by the way, I need to know the ticket submitted. That is, right? Okay. So so basically, okay, so now now the, the AI system understand what is it that you said. It basically asks you to put in the ticket number. So my ticket number that I want to look at is 0067963. And so, so now this is coming back from ServiceNow facilitated by iYahoo. You know, the ticket number is this, is what's created by Derek. Uh, the reason is this, the ticket current status is this, et cetera. So, so that's kind of conclude kind of like the, the demo flow, but I wanted to show you a little bit about, you know, why I, I have problem and how, how do I do it? Um, so basically you see the, the studio and now let's, let's see why is it that I have problem? So, so basically we have this, 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 this um, uh, utilities that basically that analyze your conversation. So you could analyze your conversation by, you know, how much, how, who's using it, how much, well, how many is escalated, et cetera. But really what, what I wanted to show you here is, was this. So there's all these sort of things that people say that the machine can't handle. So now you can capture all of this thing through the transcript and basically you can say, okay, there's some sort of problem with this. Where is it that, that it has problem with and how do you fix it? And then these are all the, the type of, of, uh, of, 
of, of conversation that that has problem because you need all of this thing in order to tune your 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 chatbot to be ready for for prime time use because you do not want the user to get the bot to get confused too much and you 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 want to uh, adapt it to all the various ways that the user would pose the question based upon the context of work. So these are the sort of thing that comes with the Rulei systems. And, um, and basically after you've done all that thing, you just go over here, one click deploy, then, then you deploy to the environment. So I'd like now to kind of pass it to, um, to Derek and show the, uh, the, the, what you have to do on the, on the IEHU side. Derek or Guy? Guy? Hello, everybody. This is Derek Pascarella with the Yahoo. I'm one of the solutions engineers here. Great job there, Henry. Um, I really love the transcripts and the training portion. I could see how you could definitely train that bot to be very smart and uh, you know pick up on all the little nuances of human speech. Is everybody able to see my screen? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to log in to my Yahoo instance here through our web UI. Yahoo is accessible through a web browser. And uh, I'm going to first open up our menu here to navigate to the audit trail. This section here lets us see a live look at all the events incoming into the Yahoo system. So the chatbot conversation that Henry just had, we can see the event came through right here. If we look at our key value pairs that were automatically parsed out and it triggered a workflow called auth. This is where the authorization happened, where it sent the text message to Henry's phone to require him to identify uh, who he is to you know, properly verify his identity. We can see here a little trailing list of all the activities that were executed in that workflow, sending a response back to the uh, Rulai API, getting the mobile number from the user's Active Directory account, generating a random four-digit number, 6701, as Henry said and put in his message, and then sending the message back to the, uh, uh, you know, the user's mobile. It also stored that four-digit code in the Active Directory account for us to check on later. So I'm gonna show you what that workflow actually looks like. I'm gonna open up our menu and navigate to the workflow designer. We can see here the Yahoo Workflow Designer, which is a drag and drop interface that allows us to easily make workflows that are actionable with codeless and scriptless activities. Activities are what we call these little boxes here. As Guy had mentioned, we're gonna be dealing with Twilio, Active Directory, and ServiceNow. This particular workflow deals with Active Directory and Twilio. First, we send a response back to Rulai to let it know that we're in good shape and we're starting the process. We then use the Active Directory get property activity, which if you'll uh, move your eyes over to the left part of the screen, we can look at our activity toolbox. And in Active Directory, we have exactly 30 out of the box, ready to go activities to immediately start get, uh, getting to work with Active Directory with no coding or scripting at all involved. Get property is part of the accounts category, we also have plenty of ways to manipulate and manage user groups as well as passwords. So if we go back over to the activities configuration, we can see that we have the username dynamically filled in, passed to us from Rulai because it already knew who Henry was. It then has us specify the IP address where our Active Directory server is running. I give it the authentication credentials and I say that I need to pull from the account the mobile number. I then use the random number generator activity to generate a four digit number between 1001 and 9999. I then store that random number using the AD set property activity into that user's Active Directory account in the notes section. And this is how we're gonna later check to make sure that the, uh, the number provided through the text message was actually correctly inputted into the Rulei chat window. And then we use our send SMS activity that's natively integrating with Twilio to send a text message to that mobile number with the following uh, text, 
Hello, you have requested to reset your password. Please use the following code to authenticate. And you can see right there, that's the four digit number that was dynamically and randomly generated by our random number generator activity. So if I return to our audit trail, opening up the menu and clicking on audit trail, um, what then happened next was after Henry put that four digit code successfully into the rule I chat conversation, it kicked off a workflow called password reset. And we can see here that it got that code successfully, generates a password, resets it, sets um, a status for the password to tell Active Directory they need to reset it upon their next login, creates a ServiceNow ticket, and then sends a message back to Rulai. So actually, I'll take a moment to copy this ticket number here. And if I go into my ServiceNow instance, we can see that if I search for this ticket number, a ticket was generated that says password reset by Henry for Active Directory in the description here as well. I'm gonna close that out, return back to a Yahoo. So let's go back to the workflow designer to look at that password reset uh, workflow. Opening up the menu, returning to the workflow designer, and here's the password reset workflow. Again, we're using Active Directory and we're also using our ServiceNow native integration. So, as I said before, we stored that random four digit number in the Active Directory account, and this is the part where Rulai said, um, okay, Yehu, we need you to run this workflow, so why don't you go ahead and pull that four digit number from the notes stored for that user, and if the number is correct, proceed down this path to reset the password, and if not, send a message back to Rulai with a, uh, you know, letting it know, sorry, but actually we were not able to authenticate you. Um, so we used our nifty little password generator activity here to meet our um, Active Directory minimum password requirements to say, I would like a new password generated, eight characters in length, a mix of both upper and lowercase letters, and uh, also include one number and one special character. We then use the password reset activity, just like you saw with the other Active Directory activities to specify the account name, the password coming from the password generator activity, and the Active Directory server. We then use the AD set password properties activity to tell Active Directory that for this particular account, the password must be changed after its next login. We then use our ServiceNow create record activity. And if you'll just let me pause for a moment to focus your attention back over to the activities toolbox on the left. If I scroll down to ServiceNow, it's one of our out of the box turnkey integrations. We can see that by simply dragging these onto our workflow, we can do many, many things in ServiceNow from creating to deleting records, downloading or uploading attachments, updating records, or grabbing ticket information. We can work with the ServiceNow CMDB this way or anything at all. Any entity that lives in ServiceNow can be talked to natively from the AAHU platform. Um, so we can see that for our ServiceNow create record activity, all we had to do was give it a uh, form that we wanted to work with. Our platform automatically discovers and caches all of your custom and default forms and fields. And then we had to give it some values. All of those form fields are available from a dropdown, nice and easy, so you don't have to remember anything. And then you simply fill them out on the right side here. We then store a message to send back to Rulai with the new temporary password, letting them know that they need to change it after their next login, and then also include the ticket number that was generated in ServiceNow, and then we send that back to Rulai. The last portion of the chatbot demonstration, if I return to the audit trail, involved querying the status of a ticket. So we can see this ticket status workflow was triggered. Um, rather than walk you through each and every one of these steps here in the audit trail, I am actually going to jump right into the workflow. So I'm gonna open up the workflow designer here. And if we look at the ticket status workflow, we can see that we use the ServiceNow get record activity to pull all of the information on the ticket number that was specified. We grab the creation date, the caller, the ticket's current state, whatever is stored in the short description field. We also grab the element ID so we can later reference the work notes and then we pull those work notes. And that's how we're able to see what the latest activity done on that ticket was. Then we 
parse out the date of the last work note and what actual details were you know, submitted for that work note and also by which user. And then we pulled the user's proper first name rather than their ServiceNow username because we like these chatbots to be very personable and human so they have a very nice organic natural conversation. Then we pull all of those details, set our message body here that you saw in the Rulai chat window, and then we send it back over to Rulai. So you can see here from the workflow designer in the audit trail, you saw how the events came in, you saw how it triggered all of these different workflows and sent the information back to Rulai. Very easy, very intuitive, and very straightforward. The last thing I want to show before I pass it over to Guy would be our modules and integration section here. Because you know you might be thinking, well, that all looks wonderful, but how simple is it really to integrate into these different platforms? So ServiceNow and Twilio are two of our native out-of-the-box turnkey integrations, as I mentioned. If I look at what was involved for configuring them, you'll see that all I needed to supply was my ServiceNow instance's URL, a username, and a password. Also, if I expand this box here, we can see where all of those forms and form field discoveries happened. All of the forms are automatically cached and discovered. And then to discover all of the fields, whether they're default fields that came out of the box or ones that you customize yourself, we just click on the binoculars here for discover. And if you should ever change anything on any of your forms or fields, you'd simply come back to this configuration and click on the refresh icon and all the changes are updated automatically. We don't want you to spend time working on things like that. We want to get you off the ground and moving as fast as possible. And the same is true for Twilio. We can see I needed to give it some basic information like an account SID token and the number I'll be sending text messages from. And uh, just like that, it's already ready to be working, sending text messages. Our conversations between uh, Yahoo and Rulai happened with our web service module. So I've got a a uh, API server running right here on this server over port 8301 that allowed Rulai to talk back to a Yahoo. And um, that sums it up.